You talk about uh, Tampa as an organization. Obviously, they have some you know superstars of Stamkos and they've some some elite players there. But like I'm looking back at when I was still coaching the Phantoms there, and then their minor league team in Norfolk, and they were like a dynasty down there. Like they <laughs> like they obviously nailed the draft picks, and they and they didn't know how to develop. But like you said, like they're they're still in it. Like they still have a, a highly competitive team. Like what, what the hell are they doing there that you know the other organizations are not? Well, I think there's there's a combination of things. Obviously, their uh, scouts and their ability to find players kind of in the later in the draft. Like you look at a guy like Braden Point, you know, mm-hmm. he's a later draft pick. Kucherov, the Andre yeah. Pilat, these guys were not first round picks. Uh, they, they were they were guys they found later on in the draft and, and supplemental guys that they found or college free agents. They for whatever reason they've been able to identify college free agents and. But what they've done is they built around a good nucleus. They obviously drafted Steven Stamkos first overall. Mm-hmm. They've drafted, you know, Victor Hedman, who's one of the best. You know, these two guys, generational goal scorer, best defenseman. They got they got the ability to draft a goaltender. <laughs> yeah, Andre, right. Who, man, like you, you watch this guy, and I got to practice against him, and, and and no offense to any of the other guys I played with, but he is just the best I've ever seen by by a wide right. margin. He really? Just, hey? Yeah. yeah. His athleticism and his ability to, and and like his burning desire to be the best goalie in the world is, is kind of like I'm I'm like anything I've ever seen. Like his his focus is so singular. It's like stretching family hockey. <laughs> like that's it. You know that's I, when he wakes up. That's that's just how it kind of goes for him. And and so they they've done a good job of just collecting this talent. And it was Steve Eiserman that kind of started this whole thing and, and really developed it and the emphasis on on the farm system and bringing these guys through. And then Julian Brisebois, his aggressive moves that he's done at the deadline. You know, we don't win the Stanley Cup, our first Stanley Cup in the bubble there, without the moves for um, Blake Coleman and yeah. Barclay Goodrow. Like, these right. are the moves that he went out and he gave up what looked like a bunch of assets. But at the end of the day, if you don't do those moves, I, I really don't think we get it done. Those guys were instrumental in, in kind of the way that team was uh, was set up. Yeah, I, they they've been relevant for quite a while, and I, and I was going to ask too. That was a great question, Riles. Uh, is it how much? I mean, how much does Cooper play into this too? Because I mean, he seems to be pushing the right buttons as well. Yeah, the one thing that Coop has done like amazing is he's developed culture. You know, yeah. he, he, he's developed a culture, and and people have fit in, and and you know, I think. At the beginning, he he was able he was coaching a lot. You know, there was a lot of coaching, but now because they've won and the, and the guys that were they brought up and they've come up through with Coop kind of through the system, they run the team. You know, this this Tampa Bay Lightning team it's run by the players. The coaches kind of set up the boundaries and the guidelines, but at the end of the day, it's the players. They're driving the bus. They're holding awesome. each other accountable. And, and and Coop's, you know, he's done a really good job of kind of morphing that in and letting that whole thing develop. And and now you got guys like Stammer and, and Hetty and, and just kind of all through the lineup of different veteran guys that, you know, they take it now and, and the young guys, they're leaders now too. And, and they've done a good job of, of just letting those guys say like, Hey, like we can yell and scream at you and that's great. But we all know that as players, like eventually you tune that out to a certain extent. So um, you got guy like I watched like the progression of Nikita Kucherov. You know, when when I first saw him, like he is he is so talented. I can't even tell you. I went to the game last night and I'm just I'm sitting beside my daughter and I'm like, just watch him. Yeah. Every, <laughs> like, focus on him, just watch what he does out there. And it's he's just so special. But same with him, like he's gone from you know, kind of a um, doesn't didn't speak a lot of English, Russian, kind of very very competitive. But now he's a leader. Like I can see him after practices. I can see him like talking to guys, like trying to make his teammates around him better. And they've just done a good job of of kind of, I guess, giving that culture room to breathe and grow. And and it's 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 going to keep going as long as those guys really kind of keep driving the bus. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and Coop was there, you know, I don't know how many years now total, but he was, you know, in Norfolk when they won the Calder Cup and they kind of the starting of the, I say that, uh, that, 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 that bit of the dynasty, like he, he created the culture in the minor leagues and, and, you know, obviously the help of some superstars at the big club, but he was able to carry that and obviously get by and that this is, this is the way good teams are built, right? It's, it is winning, it is winning 
through the players, right? The coach yeah. is there. It really should be just essentially the buffers, the, the boundaries, the keepers, and, and the rest of it is kind of taken care of inside the locker room. So for sure. love to hear patience and patience, like patience, they, right? Extremely patient. Like, you know, the, the window looked like it was open and there was probably, you know, probably after we got swept by Columbus um, after having, you know, record breaking regular season, you know, there would have been a lot of uh, teams that might have fired Cooper and right. Tampa was steadfast in their commitment. Like this is our guy. This is the guy's guy. So let's just let him grow as a coach. And, you know, even as a player, it's funny when you see, you know, as a player, you grow, but you also see the coach get better as yeah. he coaches. And, and Coop was, you know, for all, this is his first job as an NHL. His, his first job is the Tampa Bay Lightning. He's the longest tenured uh, coach in the NHL at this point. And, and they've allowed him room to grow and get better and bring on new assistants. And the assistants have grown. And, and uh, he, he's just really, you know, he's, he's really shaped kind of what they're doing here. Yeah, uh, I'll tell I you, that. Kobe, a couple of years ago, uh, uh, Brian Elliott was playing there, obviously, the last couple of years, Moose. Yeah, and Moose, good. yeah, great guy. Got to know him great, last year. What a great guy. Yeah, he's a great guy. And uh, um, so I would always try to meet up with him, you know, so go to dinner and stuff. And so I was with, I won't, I won't name everyone, but we just went, nothing crazy. We went over to McGillan's. It's a Wednesday <clears throat> and big, big rigs with us. And uh, we're, of course. We're, they're like, yeah, <laughs> yeah Shocker, like right? sh put your shock face on uh, for that one. Uh, Bogosian and uh, Paris, uh, we're, we're um, we had some dinner and, and they're like, uh, where to go? I'm like, well, Wednesday night, karaoke night over at McGillan's Ale House, you know, and they're like, all right, let's do it. So we get over there and it was about six or seven of us. And Patty, of course, got, got the big hat on, you know, the locks are laid. He's like, shots so i'm like oh fuck you know whatever but you got these veteran guys like it's yeah. not like they're so i turn around and here comes coop down the steps he had, he was upstairs with the staff i guess singing he was not singing he was not singing boys did though oh, yeah, boys sure. did. i have some video of it but uh no uh coop came down and i'm like I turn and I'm like trying to cover my mouth. I'm like, Patty, Coop, Coop, Coop. <laughs> like, cause he's got, the girl's got the yeah, shots. Big tray, and, yeah. you know? <laughs> and Coop comes over and he's standing there and he goes, Patty's like, uh, Hey Coop. He goes, got one for me. <laughs> he, <laughs> the shot. he goes, guys have fun. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> like, oh, it's so great. And leaves. I'm like, dude, like, you know, he trusts, you know, they're well, older of course, players. Yeah. Like, I guess. He knows it's they'll show like up the next day. The young kids there, but exactly. uh, it was pretty cool that, you know, I love that respect. Yeah, exactly. That's his attitude all the time. That, that has never changed. I think that's just his, he has a little different demeanor. He's definitely, you know, when he first started out, he was a, definitely a player's coach and he's, he's kind of learned how to be a player's coach, but while still being a little bit of like holding guys accountable, but yeah, it, I, I swear, if, I think, I think early on he would come to every team party if you could, you know, like yeah, <laughs> he, he loved he it. Eh? He really is. He's kind of, he, and he cultivates that he wants to be one of the boys and, and he preaches family and, and uh, you know, he, he practices what he preaches for sure.